the chance. Center to Kadop. Kadop gets the pass back to Panda. Oh, man. And Panda opens up the scoring for Dignitas. Boy, Drippe said it best yesterday. Game one has a bit of nerves, but game one at day two, totally different oh. story. The big zigzag motion upfield. Kadop, Violent Panda. Excellent hustle. Still from pressure. Panda. And that shot from Cookser just Oh, the high. muscles. Still oh, my to goodness. Force it through. There flip it is. Side. It has to be it. He breaks through, and Yukio gets flip side on the board. You felt like that one had to happen. It actually stems all the way back to Violent Panda and Turbo Pulsa as they were pushing up field. Kadop had that ball on his car. After Dignitas starts an attack, a shot from Mystic pass down off the backboard again. Chance for Yukio. Can he get the double? He hits the double, and flip side extend their lead. Yukio again, a hard press from Flipside Tactics. Cooksier finally able to just beat somebody from Dignitas to a challenge, and a brilliant shot from Yukio. There's a reason Cooksier said Yukio, he felt like he should have been the MVP. Kadop passed down to Panda, and Panda doesn't make great contact, but the idea was oh. there. Chance again there for Kadop, and Kadop's there this time. Dignitas within one. And Kadop goes across the net trying to find some demos. Not there, steals the boost and sees Turbo Pulse to come up with a massive challenge. And he didn't even get the right angle, but he ended up putting it off of Cooksier's car. Cooks, oh. that shot wide. Panda is going to take over. Counterattack opportunity, two on one. Mystic Behind tries to get him. the save, but Panda with the perfect flick ties it for Dignitas. And this is the epitome of the two on one game. Mystic knows he's in a lot of trouble and he has to try and cover both options. He dives oh. across and a perfect oh. executed touch from Violent Panda. Flip side and it's beaten over Kada. Now numbers advantage for Flipside off the backboard and Cooksers there! Flipside take the lead! And they do take the lead, it's because actually that was Violent Panda who got beat, excuse me, and Kadop just couldn't reach the touch. Yukio going back behind him, of course, Cooksier diving across a tough angle, but who else has to try and force it through because they know how tough it is to score against this Dignitas squad. Are you That's kidding me? Might find the net, Kadop using everything in his toolkit to make this one find the net. Goes and steals the corner boost. Violent Panda says, go and get it. Yes, sir, no problem. A one touch off the ceiling and over the head and into the left corner. A minute and a half in. Take the lead in game three and off the kickoff. That one, I'm scratching your head on this one, Achieves. Gotta go back and look. Mystic is oh, first, just a delayed a touch and everyone spreads out to get boost. I hate to see That's it. A, yeah, it's a rare goal. Panda keeping it in. Shot opportunity off the backboard. Oh, Mystic man. with the save, but Kadop still forces it through. Dignitas take the lead. And you had to wonder who the break was going to hit harder. The answer might be flip side. They're just lurking like sharks in front of this net. Kadop just pulls one through the defense. And, and now Panda just beat that final defender. Good infield pass. Cookster with a long shot. Nobody oh, back for him. Dignitas. And Cookster ties it up. And Violent Panda stuck on the ceiling, no boost. It's a long rotate back. Nobody able to get a handle on it. And Cookseer just blasts one, and unfortunately, the race back. It was a battle of positioning there. They backed off. So over time there approaching four minutes, but Turbo finishes it off, and Dignitas remain perfect. They're going to the upper finals. And a gutting finish. Mystic challenging the ball. Wasn't sure if Yukio was going to be able to get in front of it. Push back on the blue half, pass to Metza, back to Remco, back to Metza, rolling up the back wall. Oh, a bad no. miss touch, and Remco strikes first for Weed M Girls. A big mistake there by Drippe as he comes off his own post, and I like the passing plays coming out from Weed M Girls, and it's a big miss. Remco able, he sees it happen, comes around, puts it away, comes out from Torsas there. Kami, the only one back, has to make the play. Open it's a net. wide open net. I Ignite gonna put it home. I Ignite gets the open net here against the Chiefs. And and the Chiefs are not unfamiliar with leaving the net open. We saw that yesterday. They got to be able to clean that up. And it's a big mistake again. You saw the miss in midfield. Less than a minute left to go. Still really no threat of an offense at all. A light oh, shot no. goes in from Metzanaris, and somehow we them girls go up 3-0. And again, another miss on defense. You can see Torsas not able to connect on that ball. Metzanaris gets up, puts it on target. Kami has to make that save, doesn't connect on it. Chiefs attackers not giving them any space to work with. And every mistake that has come from the Chiefs Weedham's girls there to punish another one as I Ignite has a free shot to put one away. And just getting Another goal kind of rewarded for such a great game here by We Damn Girls. Big bump. A great bump. More of that will absolutely net you. He's going to have to pull away Drippe. And now 
trying to find his way through. Metsa Norris has a break here. Oh, oh what a big Metsa oh, Norris! What a play! Beautiful play from Metsa Norris. The touch from Iignite just stalls the ball top of the box. Look at the fake. Kami gets beat two up and over his head. Fantastic play from Metsa Norris. In the third against the corner. Tries to flip past Kami. Here's for my Ignite. Follow Back to up. Remco. Shoots. Goes under. Weedem girls two to nothing. Great play spent by Remco. And Weedem girls find themselves in the lead by two. You can see Ignite putting it off the back wall. Defense spread out for the Chiefs. The follow up from Remco. And he puts his team up by two. To turn the course of a series around for a team. Give them that confidence. But oh, it is no. all Weedem girls. I Ignite having all of the net to choose from. He picks the back or the back side three nothing. And Torsos there just getting caught going for a boost. Leaves the goal wide open. It wasn't the best touch from Kami. Bring that ball down, forcing the defender to come to him. And then he makes a play. That was a great opportunity. Look at the shot from Metsa Norris. What? Are you kidding me? Metsa Norris, or what? 24 seconds in, finds the first goal. How do you stop this man? What a touch. And he is popping off in this series. Back towards Kami. A tap to the corner. This is a net here for We Damn Girls. Two to nothing with a minute 41 left to go. They look like they're going to do it. A big miss on, in, in the midfield there. And then Torsos the clear. Not good enough. Off his own corner. Comes back to Remco and the defense. They could be shut out of this entire series. Off the ramp. Here's Trippe. That shot. Whoa, it goes he in. It. He gets the first goal. Trippe puts the Chiefs on the board. And a spark of life here for the Chiefs. And it's Trippe. Who else for them to get them going? Remco just can't get the touch. Wish you will try. That's going to be just wide. And set aside as well. Tainted Minds having a little trouble breaking this pressure. And it's the defensive brick wall torment. Who scores first for C9? And that net opens wide up, all because of gimmick. He goes through, puts pressure on CJ to push out into that box, pushes too far forward to go. Tainted minds, but they still have a minute to work with. Only a one goal game. Banking one in again. There's Torment, and he's at it his second. Finds that tie up angle. Way to go from him, but look at the play from Squishy. Just lobs it up, knows the defender's not going to get a good touch, and Torment swoops in and capitalizes. Squishy, after Torment nearly takes out Express. Good concentration oh. from Express. And again, just oh. narrowly <laughs> dodging bullets, and finally Torment scores. He scored all three for C9. He hits this ball and puts just enough English to roll it around the post into the net. Cloud nine. Yeah, that's where you need to use those side walls as a fourth team member. Just open up the passing plays. And speaking of open, how about a wide open net for Express to tie this game up? Much needed for Tainted Minds. It's the clutch playmaker from Oceania who finally breaks what was about a nine minute. A minute remaining in this match. It is so important. You do not want to see them put on match point, but not if Squishy and Gimmick have something to say. The one, two combo off the backboard. That's just incredible stuff. Right when you think Tainted Minds are going to get right back into this game, Cloud9 scores immediately. So now Gimmick will try to kill off the remainder of this 20 seconds. His oh. shot off the mark, but he gets a little help from his enemies, and it's a 3-1 lead. This is just unfortunate if you're shady. You're trying to read that, trying to get it off of the crossbar. Final countdown in game two, and it looks like it will indeed be Cloud9 almost getting one at the buzzer. They do from Gimmick yet again. It's a hat trick. You're going to leave the ball in the box that long. It's going to find the back of the net and nothing more than a consolation goal for Gimmick to get that hat trick. Are going to win this match. They're going to need every single fan in this building cheering for them. There's a shot in from Torment. And you look at that, it's really like a two goal swing, Subi. CJ missing one just over the bar. And then Squishy sets this up for Torment who has been on point all series. Well, I mean, look at that touch and sets Torment up beautifully. We know Squishy for his scoring. He does not have a goal in this series. It's five assists, and now he finally adds one, just as we mentioned that. He was just waiting for you to say something, but the pressure put on from Cloud9 right now is just so much. You saw the double commit from Tainted Minds. Shady up the ladder here. 
CJ for himself, though he's gonna leave it for Express, and that will get Tainted Mines right back in it. This is what I like to see. I love to see the play get away from that corner, utilize that back wall, and by the time Squishy sees what happens, it is way too late, and Express, oh, Could nice. be dangerous after that demo. CJ's waiting, and his infield pass intercepted by Squishy. Nobody's home, and Squishy hits right between the eyes. You're trying to do this against the team that perfected infield passes. Squishy reads it all the way and sends it downtown, puts it between the dotted lines, and that's exactly what happened. But CJ trying to find that tight angle, but Torment with the good positioning on that back wall, and once again, Squishy finding the wide open net. Squishy, the Grim Reaper himself in this series, makes it 4-1. He's got a hat trick as well. Plenty of goals to go around for Cloud9. Hard as they can, there is no giving up in their hearts. The Rocket League Championship Series is better when Tainted Minds, and in particular, CJ CJ is involved, and he scores one for good measure on his way out. This is exactly what you need to do. Just go out with a goal, and CJ, CJ. Hank gets the save. Great pass play coming out from G2 early, but the hustle from Farah. Guys at the desk, oh. no, a pinch. JNAP's gonna strike first. Straight in off of a pinch there from the corner. Looked like Kronovi was trying to take care of this one by himself. Sets it up, JNAP's comes in, Fruity's not quite there, and that's G2 with the first goal. Really well played by Kronovi. He's rotating back, trying to get out of the way. Find a nice placement, but still, ball wide, stay. One nothing for G2, can they make it two nothing? There it is off the backboard, nobody home. The defense couldn't find the touch. Great decision by Rizzo, continuing to step up. JNAPS just launches that in the midfield while two players from PSG are rotating out. One needs to challenge that in the air. Shaw set now back out to Fruity, past the middle line. It's just up to Kronovi in the back. Rizzo rather makes the first save, but the follow-up comes through. A demolition in the midfield opens it up, and PSG's on the board. It's a great challenge by Fruity. That goes right into the corner where he wants it and immediately puts pressure on it. A lot of times people will take that boost in the corner instead, trying to deny that, but instead... Best of touches from Farah there. Possibly a window of opportunity, but Fruity makes the best of it, putting it into the box once more, and Chaussette just beats Rizzo to the ball, and it's a tie game. That's just tough for Rizzo on defense. You see one come across, Fruity's got boost, he feathers it, and Kronovi jumps up, he's like, I need to block one of these, but it doesn't matter. Fruity just backs off. And they'll get into the blue half, a neutral touch to keep it in the corner. Fruity comes up, able to get it back out to Chaussette, who gets it over the top of Kronovi, back on the offense. Chaussette puts it up in the corner. Play. Nobody there to block him. PSG's got the lead. Chaussette doing it all on his own. He was a huge proponent that stays consistent. One touch over the top from a pass, and then a quick flick to get it on by, then the placement perfect, even though it's on an open net. Kronovi looks for Rizzo. Doesn't like his boost situation. He'll back off. Kronovi now back off the clear. JNAP's dropping it down, Kronovi's right there. What a play from JNAP's reading this clear out, putting it right back onto the backboard, and it's a tie game again. I was actually a little bit worried. Kronovi was coming across, and he ended up getting bumped instead of being able to go for the double touch. Response nearly coming through. Kronovi still got boost to work with, gets blocked, but the follow-up still there from JNAP's, finds the shot upper corner, and it's a lead back for G2. This is the G2 we know they're capable of. Kronovi following his own touch for a double, but gets saved with the immediate follow-up by JNAP's. That's the kind of pressure these guys need to stay at the top. After so many goals going in, seven scored here in game number one. Fruity trying to drop this to Shaw set, finds the angle and it goes in, another tie game, a shootout here between PSG and G2. Back and forth we go, Wave. Fruity though, slowing this one down, such a smart <laughs> play. Too many times have they been forcing it in the middle and with offenses going back. Shaw set taking a shot, blocked in the air. Farah comes in, but now I have the pass out to Fruity. Nobody's home. The defense just too wide, and PSG has the lead. Just all kicking off with that mistake from Rizzo. He was the last one back. He needed to buy some time, and his touch just kills right in front. Forces JNAPS to half rotate. Doesn't have the... Rizzo with an excellent read. This one on target. Gets saved by Farah, but the pressure's still not off. Kronovi now into the back. We're getting double tap, but he's out of boost. Here comes JNAPS in with a follow-up, though, and G2's got the lead. Just respect. It's complete respect. You see Kronovi up like that. You know what he's capable of in the air, and both players on defense are just sitting there waiting for that touch to come in so they can save it. They totally forget there's a... Followed up himself, he's got Rizzo in midfield, but they turn around as Fruity picks it up. JNAPS is out of boost, and they beat the back line. Fruity double taps it off the post, and we've got a tie game. Well played by Fruity, just using that space. JNAPS gets the boost and starts to rotate out instead of pressuring. 
At least Kronovi in an awkward spot. He's already got one next to him, so he has to challenge from further back than he probably wants. Both teams with opportunities to score. JNAP's now making a lot of work. There's no one in between him and the goal, but he's running out of the window. He gives the pass across to Rizzo, and he puts it home. G2's got the lead with 27 seconds remaining. That is just remaining. a perfect pass from JNAP's to pitch that not hard enough to where it goes by, but just right on the money so Rizzo can get there in time. They just got to keep it here in the blue. Cordovi just looking for the long range read, doesn't find it. It's just Rizzo in the back of Shaw's setting pretty challenge. They put it in. The buzzer beater's there. Cordovi's mistake on the wall hurts G2 immensely. He misses the touch underneath and then bumps Shaw's set. I thought it was over, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Rudy behind him ties it up. They're going to have to make some repositional contact before they can take a shot. Chernovi and Janaps, though, they bump into each other. Fruity crashes in, and PSG takes game two. Takes game two and puts himself on match point. You just see a similar oh. situation, almost reminiscent of the World Championship goal last season with Fireburner. Kronovi with the read, sends it towards the goal, but Shaw has got the read on him as well. Counter touches on counter touches here. It's an excellent shot. That was in? Are you kidding me? What a placement from Kronovi. There was a double commit on the initial stop. Shaw set and Fruity both go up. Oh. If you take a look at Fruity's perspective, he's actually power sliding back into position. Carried it by himself. Gets one demo demolition on the Fruity. It's in front of the goal there. JNAPS comes in. It's not going to matter. Pass across, Kronovi's there, the shot on target, two goal lead for G2. An excellent outfield pass here to change things up, see if I can hold on to this lead. Beautiful textbook pass. You saw one initially challenge JNAP as well, sitting in position. He is on top of that backboard, but you don't need to, it's there. Much in half time, G2 with a two goal lead. Now a three goal lead, let's go. That's what they need if they want to be able to secure this one. They've been to two goals before, not three. Let's see if they can hold on. Good flick by JNAPS, pops it over, he gets a good kickoff, cheats up really hard on it. Well, JNAPS trying to give it to Kronovi, but beaten by PSG. This one going towards the goal, it should be in from Farah. He puts in the first one PSG need, they need two more to make this a game. Just a lack of boost, it looks like Kronovi gets beat out by Shaw Set. It's one of the benefits of carrying your momentum through the play. He didn't stop that entire time while he's rotating, so he's got the pace and the momentum. A lot of power on this touch all the way into the blue corner. Put it underneath Shaw set. Fair is there. He's backwards in net, though. Not really even. He's just off to the side. Not great positioning. I think he was maybe moving out for boost, but then had to change his mind. Yeah, I needed a little bit of help there from Shaw set. Shaw set was playing it slow as was, and it's because they needed to buy time. That corner boost was crucial for Fair. Continue on. Rizzo moving up. Shaw set gets the nice lofter to the top, and JNAP's low on boost here. He'll follow this one onto the ground, then looks for the dunk on for Rudy. JNAP's, the knapsack comes out huge, and it's 2-0, G2. Again, they catch PSG on the back foot. The first challenge is a complete whiff, which leaves Fruity in a terrible spot. Just across halftime here, still the two-goal lead for G2, but Fair and company coming in off the backboard. Here comes Fruity, and he'll finally put one in. PSG's on the board. Fruity putting it in. Not only is he trying to deny the momentum of G2, he's also tying the record and actually beating the record. 21 goals on the weekend with that one but for PSG. Net. PSG not able to punish just yet. Kronovi with an excellent touch over the top. Rizzo moving down the field. He's just got shots at the beat, and he gets the redirect. There's the three goals. G2 can sit a little bit more comfortably, but PSG's already on the board, so they've got to stay active. Basically giving themselves back that extra life, something that PSG needs to be careful of. I know the Oh, Fruity dropping hit, but it's wide. It's a good pass play right now. The land rookie, not oh, quite there, Shaw but Shaw Set has it, and it's a one-goal game. They may be getting those touches, but they need to get it out of their own half. As soon as it gets to midfield, they play it back in. Shaw Set just puts a pretty shot bottom right. In regulation, looking like overtime as Shaw Set sends it towards the goal. Rizzo puts it away. JNAPS to keep it from Farah. Dropping it back down in. Fruity puts Fruity! it through. Nine seconds left. The defense, they couldn't understand. The rotation breaks down, and PSG's got the lead. To qualify for Atlanta, team play to get a bump out oh. this time. The distraction from Shaw Set. Justin will win. The challenge, but it goes lateral into the midfield. Garrett G missing on the backboard. Squishy misses on the crossbar. And three okay. players commit to the defense. None of them touch it, so Torment scores. Yeah, so the first one, Squishy was expecting Garrett to come up with that touch, tried to put it on target, but everyone from NRG is scrambling. And what unfortunately, Fireburner takes out one of his own teammates. I think keys to success for Cloud9 are how Ooh. well they get the ball away from the side. Oh. Squishy down the middle. Oh. Squishy gets two. They've put it in another one on a great pass play, and Cloud9's up. And a nice touch here from Torment right down. Unfortunately, NRG 
Justin's not in a bad spot, but too much pace from that close. He tried, got a hand on it. Cloud9 still with the two goals. Energy yet to score, Justin underneath. There's one! one. Nice shot from Garrett, the redirect right in front of the box to put Energy on the board. And what's so nice is this actually all starts back in Energy's corner before the replay even gets going. Fireburner makes the executive decision to keep that ball close, let it roll a little bit, make sure everyone's on the same page. A little bit of mispositioning from Energy right now. Really physical play from NRG, the open net, and that might have been the difference maker. Fireburner with a demo in the midfield on, I believe, Gimmick. And it just opened a big hole here for Justin and Torment, not able to get a good touch and stick with the ball. Fireburner with a hard press after that demo finds the right-hand side. They get a solid clear, but now both a little bit low on boost and out of rotation. Gimmick destroyed, might actually help Cloud9 here as Fireburner comes what out, drops it in! Oh my goodness, Fireburner is doing it well. And Cloud9 got all tangled up on the back wall. Again, a demo out of the midfield, but Justin making sure to hang on to that ball in possession. Double commit from Cloud9. They've had some issues with that on defense. Follows up his own touch, pass Torment now, looking to get it past Squishy on the wall. He takes the demolition. Great Instead, demo, Justin perfect. Justin sends the shot. He's got so many options, just pick them. I mean, you know the game plan. NRG came in with here. They're like, let's just hit them out of the way. Get them all off the pitch, yep. and we'll just score on open nets. Make that two demolitions for NRG. The second one doesn't <laughs> matter, but. Gimmick just looks to play some defense. They'll get it past him there. Nobody there at go. home. Garrett G gets demolished, oh, no. but it's just enough for Fireburner to put it in. NRG answering back strong here. We got a ball game. And Squishy tries to answer the physical play, says you don't get a free shot. But unfortunately, Torment, thinking he had a bit more time than he did, Fireburner just had him beat to the ball. NRG, you know, they made the adjustment, said just hit the guy who's going to be the follow-up. And it worked out beautifully here in game two. It's Cloud9 needing to find a change. Ooh, a nice okay. shot from Squishy. Well, nice to get some morale back on their side, get the momentum going back their way a little bit. There's four, game, four goals in 25 seconds. It's not going to happen here. Game two will be NRGs, but Cloud9 needing to find that Cloud9 always relies on. So difficult. And Gary G had a big bump in the net right now. It allows this ball to stick in the corner for a bit longer. Here come in more G NRG one more time. Uh, Gary G up. Torment will get that one away. Justin, though, with another shot. shot. Oh, shot. my goodness. What an absurd angle to hit the winning, the, the leading goal. Such a tough shot here. And Gimmick stuck on the line with no boost, not in a good spot. And good try. No luck. Man. Off the line and over his head. Justin puts him ahead. Torment in the corner, taking multiple contact here to get this one out. And it's not good enough. He had to get it out with at least the second touch, but it wasn't enough. Garrett G will take advantage, abuse it, make it a two-goal game. And Torment trying to just air dribble this one over the midfield. Unfortunately, no respect from NRG. They go for the challenge, and Torment still holding on to their two-goal lead, trying to make what it three. What is going on? Nobody wants to play Rocket League right now. It's like we all know they have no boost. OK, that's true. Perfect information around and there in. Garrett G will put it down. Finally, it had to find its way into the back of the net. I don't even know how NRG would have been able to stay in this Cloud9 half with nothing going in the tank, and just Cloud9 couldn't get organized to somehow get a good challenge. Who's going to have the last moment of brilliance is all that matters. It's quite similar to what we saw out of the regional tournament, you know. NRG got beat as that one Oops. slides over his head. Not sure how that one got through, but Torment gets him on the board. Definitely looked like it was high enough. Definitely looked like the defense was there, but 50 miles per hour. Quite a screamer. Oh, man. And man. Perfect. Didn't even, the trail didn't even change colors, Garrett. G Airborne in the final minute, still up by two. Cloud9 needs one more if they want to be able to play into zero second time. The pass out to Justin. Danger. Can he find the shot? He does. Gimmick's not quite there, and it's a three-goal game again. Fireburner puts on a master class out of the corner here on how to get this ball away. Sees Justin lined up, says, here you go. I've got him beat. Just make sure you find the right spot. And yes, he does. The lower right-hand side. Cloud9's trying to complete the book. And get them an RLCS Whoa, title. A great start from Gimmick with a just absolute slammer from midfield. And then you get Garrett G caught off the back wall. Torment feeds Gimmick, and he says, let's just put one on target. And Fireburner finds himself a little bit too far forward. Energy's got to find a way to score. Great job keeping it close, but in the oh. wrong way. Garrett G dropping it here. Squishy's it's not in. there. Are you kidding me? Garrett G with his little pop off the ground, just enough to confuse Squishy. And I love Gimmick trying to keep that ball close. Unfortunately, it went a little bit too far away. Squishy coming into net a little too hot and couldn't reverse in time to get the ball. Quick challenges from both teams. They run into each other in the oh. open net. Torment can't capitalize, Justin and that is not good. Justin stalls it, but Garrett G can't get there. Torment will put it in, and Cloud9's got the lead. Well, I said they couldn't capitalize. I spoke maybe three seconds too soon. Justin, maybe a little bit antsy, dove at that one a little too soon, thinking that someone from C9 was going to be right on top of it. I'm not willing to commit what would have been all three players in the back third. Can they find it there? Almost. Oh, so Gimmick gets it away. Garrett's still in position. Garrett the score. Is. He puts it through. NRG finally finds a way into the box. 
And they've got the first goal. And it's just a love tap from Justin up over the net. Fireburner so close. Torment thinking that ball was going to get cleared out to the side. Cloud9 in general fading that way. Justin's nowhere to be seen. Squishy's got it all by himself. Garrett G now up. A miss there. But Torment comes in. He's putting it towards the goal. Justin makes the first save, but they've got to get the clear. Fireburner oh, can't find it. And Gimmick ties the game. The NA MVP comes in to deliver the equalizer. A weak clear from NRG and just a bullet at the middle and a tough task for Fireburner. He can't find the answer and Gimmick converts it. And squishy back to Torment, looking for the shot. He puts it back into the corner, chooses to go for the pass play instead. Three players crash into the box. Gimmick puts it in. The demolition made the way. But that one's going to be knocked to the side, EG. Now on the counterattack, Classics with the dribble, flicks it by one defender off the backboard. Chicago missed his shot. Crump to G with the follow up. Farrah! Right, but Farrah what? with the own goal. EG take the lead. He must have suspected this was going to be a better shot. Chicago flailing about. Corrupted there to be the third man. Fruity and Farrah. Chassette upfield. Classics cuts it off. Off the backboard hard. Chassette can't make the read. Another miss. Chicago with the follow up. Two to nothing, EG. This better not be what we see the rest of the series because PSG are in for some trouble. This is not great defense. As a matter of fact, it's bad defense. Farah. Ball out into the middle That's for Chassette. That's A in. wide open net. Fruity will finish this one off. PSG are now within one. Look at this challenge from Farah. Two people still couldn't get it past him, and he got one more touch. Again, the quick turnaround from Chassette and Fruity now making it a one goal game. Go for the center, but it's a little wide, but still a setup. Just Farrah set. to Chassette. Chassette with set. the double tap. Just Farrah. One, and Farrah cleans it up on the rebound. But a look at this shot from Chassette. The speed again. He read that coming across, knowing he'd make it. He got the second touch, nearly putting it into the net. But Farrah there to support off the post. Chicago centers that out. Dangerous ball. Did get another hit. And now the demo. Chassette, if he can get there, the net's open. He takes advantage, and PSG extend the lead to two. Giving them a bit of a taste to their own medicine. Physical play is something EG's known for, but PSG giving it right back to him to give them that two-goal padding. Chassette there to support his teammate. Putting pressure on EG. Chicago hits it to his own corner. Trying to dribble it to Sh or Classics in the middle. Classics, a great Classics. first touch, and he's going to catch PSG off guard. EG take the lead. You talk about small mistakes. This was just a rotation error. Oh, there was beautiful. just too much gap between those two, or Classics actually. Classics off to the side. Corrupted G again misses. Uh -oh. We've seen him miss a couple hits. Chance for Chassette. Pops it up, and he's going to get the goal. A mistake from Corrupted G. Chassette. Makes a pay. I mean, this is an absolutely critical mistake. Classics knew Corrupted G was going to hit that. We all knew Corrupted G was going to hit that. Double commit. Classics and Corrupted G both going for the ball. Uh-oh, Fruity just set with a bump. There. Yeah. But no boost <laughs> for Farah, and he makes it work. Threads the needle and gets the lead for PSG. I wonder if he heard that his teammates bumped into each other, and he's like, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to solo this up. Corrupted trying to body him, his teammate in the corner thinking that he was going to get he hits that off to the side and Chassette putting on the pressure all three going for it oh and Farah able to clean up the pass from Fruity all three defenders here from EG making an attempt no Chicago got bumped on a team attempt Fruity seizing that opportunity knowing he had to get it in front of that net as classics was there but so was Chassette and again, this could be the final game of the, the day. The demo opens up the net, and Corrupted G ties it up for EG. Finally, the physical play pays off for EG. The demolition on the goalie and net, and we will see a wide open net for Corrupted G. The aggression. And now Fruity has a chance to beat Chicago two on one, and that's going to be a goal for PSG. The numbers game just too much for EG. I love this attack from Fruity. He knew there was one defender. He just needed to bait him into making any decision that wouldn't make a win. Chicago is back passes, trying to burn time. A little too off risky. the clock, off the ceiling, in the middle. Chicago is there, and he does it for EG. We're tied up. With no hesitation, the challenge from Classics and the chase from Chicago. Nine seconds left to keep it tied up. Evil geniuses. Classics is there to meet it. Chicago, he's up, going off the backboard. 
Chassette hits it aside. The shot from Perot. He finds the upper 90 EG. Perot to G. E break turn. Finds Classics. The give and go. That shot's going to be wide. Oh my. The follow up from Classics. EG take the early lead. Look at the team play opening up on this Classics to Corrupt and right back. The shot nearly in the upper 90 and Classics still there to support. And you saw the look.